Back here on Sky Sox warm up. Sky Sox begin another homestand here against the uh, the Memphis Redbirds, and uh, it's time for our weekly visit with Sky Sox manager Rick Sweet. And uh, Rick, your team drops uh, five of eight on the just completed road trip. You get a split though in Iowa with a big win yesterday. Uh, your impressions of your team over the last week? Well, we're we're slowly. Uh, putting things together the way we want. Uh, we're playing better baseball, not consistent baseball. I think, uh, you know, with, with the progress we're making, I'm, I'm really looking for a big homestand here, uh, especially with the clubs coming in. I, I still, we've seen a lot of clubs, and and really I've not seen anybody that I would point a finger at and say, oh, God, they're, they're much better than we are. We can't compete with them. Uh you know, so we're from that standpoint. I'm very comfortable uh, with with the club we have and what we're trying to do. It's hard to believe a month into the season, the longest winning streak for this ball club is two games, and you've done that once. Now, we both discussed the fact that it's not from a lack of effort from your guys. Can it be? Maybe on the other hand, maybe they're trying too hard at times. Well, at times that that always can be can you know come into the scenario. But I'd rather have it that way than a team shut down. And and there's no doubt these guys they've they've got no quit in them. We just are, the consistency of our game something falters all too often uh, and and gets us in trouble. Whether it's a big inning, whether it's defense, or or we don't score any runs, it's you know it seems like something falters. But we're we're getting better. We're we're putting more things more good things are happening than than we're happening and. Uh, you know, I, I like I said, I think this homestand will tell a lot about what kind of club we have. It's a week uh, into the Cray Council regime up there at the big league level. Have you been able to notice any discernible changes in the organization's approach uh, since he got hired? No, I no, I would say there's no changes yet. I, I would say what has happened and what always happens when you fire somebody at the top is it gives everybody a, a breath of fresh air, a, a recharge, uh, <clears throat> you know, a second chance for a lot of guys. And and I definitely see and hear that both at the major league level and and here at the AAA level. That that definitely adds. And you know, I'm a manager, so you hate to say the firing of of the head guy is something that motivates, but it does. Whether it it gives guys a a, a new start because they got off to a bad start, or whether it gives guys that motivation, to say, hey, he's looking for somebody new I might be new you uh coming into the season you guys tried to play down I say you guys the organization and whatnot tried to play down uh, the effects of the altitude and what it might do uh, to the team here and pitchers in particular a month into the season has that changed at all well, it's changed from the standpoint that, okay, now we see it and we understand it. Uh, it doesn't change the fact that it's something you got to deal with. It's just like pitching with wind, like pitching in cold, like pitching with any other temperature change, uh, climate change, whatever you want to call it. It's something you got to deal with. We definitely see the effects. We, we definitely know and visually see, and the numbers indicate, okay, we need to make some adjustments, and that's something we got to work on. Rick Sweet, my guest, Sky Sox manager here on Sky Sox Warm Up before game one of a four game series between the Sky Sox and Memphis here at Security Service Field. A couple of moves while the team was on the road. One of them, Logan Schaefer, sent down from Milwaukee. What's his mindset returning to AAA here? Well, it's very good. Actually, both he and Wooten came back with great attitudes. Uh, again, it's the same thing. Counts did a great job up there of, of sending him down, of telling him, hey, you need to go down, you need to work on this. They have a plan down there. We, we've already discussed it. Uh, they, they've come back with the right attitude. Now they've got to go out and use that right attitude and produce and get better so they can get back to the big leagues. The organization also signs Chris Nelson, a guy that we're familiar with here, obviously. He came up with the Rockies organization, a former number one uh, draft pick. He has good big league time. Uh, what does he bring to the table for your ball club? Well, number one, we don't have to acclimate him to the climate here and to the weather and the wind changes. Uh, he's been here. He understands it. That That's a positive. And, again, we're just trying to upgrade a little bit. We're trying to find guys that we think will fit. Uh, he's a guy that we've had our eye on before. It wasn't just a last-minute spur of the moment. Uh, it, it was definitely a name and somebody we had, had kind of pointed at as, okay, this guy might fit. He's not getting to play a lot over there. Let's see what we can figure out. And, uh, you know, so far we like what we've seen, uh, both defensively and offensively. It'll be nice to get him going and, and get him, uh, you know, helping our offense a little bit. 
Now, a guy who uh, gave your starting rotation kind of a shot in the arm was Josh Renicky, who made his first start the other day and pitched extremely well uh, there in Iowa. What, what were your thoughts on what you saw from him? Well, I've seen Josh before. He pitched for me before when he was first drafted. Uh, so I, I know his makeup. He, he commands his fastball. He commands all of his pitches, which is something you have to do here. Uh, when you get get behind always 2-0 and or 3-1, and you're going to be in trouble pitching in this league. And, and he does a good job of keeping that very, very few times and going staying aggressive. He pitched – I thought he pitched against that Iowa ball club – absolutely as good as you can pitch because they're a dangerous club. They've got a lot of guys that are dangerous in that lineup. Rick Sweet, my guest, just another question or two for the Sky Sox manager. Uh, two teams in the league that have really just uh, uh, gotten off to incredibly hot starts are Las Vegas and Oklahoma City. Uh, tonight, Las Vegas loses Noah Syndergaard, who's starting and making his Major League debut for the Mets. And, and I would expect to see more and more of that for the Mets and the Dodgers as the season continues to uh, unfold here. Is that going to help level the playing field maybe here at AAA a little bit? Well, there's no doubt that's what happens. We we had our what we called our big three last year in Nashville, we, and we got off to a tremendous start. I mean, we we were tearing up the league with pitching. You got to have pitching, and and our big three were incredible. And then our young guys uh, that followed behind those three were doing a good job. So it's the same thing that you, you talk to other guys in the league, and they say, "Oh man, Las Vegas has very good pitching." And then you talk about Oki City, and they say it's a major league staff. I mean, they were, they're going to lose some people, and, and that's the nature of this game, and it'll, it'll level out. What, what I've got to do is make sure we get ourselves on, a, on the right track here so when it levels out, we're not too far out of it, and we've got a chance to get back into it. In closing, I saw you working with Nevin Ashley a little bit out there after a batting practice today, a Sky Sox catcher, and, and uh, you being a former catcher as well. Uh, the, the rule last year was instigated, the, uh, the catcher collision rule. Uh, what did you think about that, uh, being a former catcher yourself? <laughs> well, I laugh at it. Uh, you know, I understand where they're coming from, and actually I hated the rule when they instigated it uh, because the way they interpreted it, obviously whoever, whoever wrote, had written the rule had no clue what they were talking about. It was non-workable. Uh, what we've done since then is they've gotten some baseball people involved. We've gotten back to the basics of, of you've got to have the ball to block home plate. Uh, and that makes it very simple, just like I, I got a, a call reversed here. If you remember, I think it was last homestand where they called a guy out and uh, they called our guy, Ashley, out. And when we went back and I talked to him about it, and I said, hey, the rule states he can't block home plate without the ball. That's what he did. They had a conference. They said, yeah, you're right. He's safe. Uh, you know, the rule now, as it's written and as it states, I like. It's very workable. It's very doable. And it's act it actually makes sense, which uh, – you got to get baseball people involved to get things to make sense. And it really would have blown up in their face had the World Series last year been decided on that rule in Game 7 between the Giants and the Royals. Sweetie, always good to speak with you, and uh, go get them tonight. Well, it's the start of a big homestand for us. I'm looking forward to it. we got Snapper, Thornburg on the, on the mound, and uh, I, I couldn't ask for a better guy to have on the mound to get this homestand started. Right. It's Rick Sweet, Sky Sox manager. More to come from Security Service Field on Sky Sox warm-up right after this.